gonna pee on that? Probably. Yep. Yep. He is. Yep. Look at him go. All his favorite pee spots. That's great. It's hard to see. Hello. What? Welcome back. <laughs> oh hi! I'm Miss Peter Silky. You've caught me venturing forth into the wilds in search of bark. This week we're making bark buckets. I've sent you drawings, but you might need a video too. So Here's hoping this one finds you. Every year in this Northeast Ohio, in the months of May and June, sometimes May, always June, there can be found sap running in the trees, which makes their bark very loose. You can uh, pry it off in pieces and use it to make containers, uh, buckets for berry picking, Hey Sam! Uh, for tools, for yarn, mushrooms, anything. Um, depending on how you slice it, you can get different shapes. Uh, but the first thing we're going to focus on is finding the right tree. The right tree is any tree which you can get the bark off of. Hmm. Lucky thing for us, these past couple of weeks, We've had a couple of windstorms, so there's a lot of trees that are down that were getting uh, sappy right around the time that old north wind went and uh, blustered them over. So we're gonna try and find one of those. Uh, and if we can't find one of those, we'll improvise. First rule of thumb, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, uh, don't take any bark from trees which do not belong to you or that you do not have permission to take bark from. Don't take them from public lands, especially don't take them if you're going to try and uh, take it from a living tree. It's possible to take bark from a living tree and not injure it in a mortal way, but not. But it's hard to know which trees uh, qualify for that. And if you do go for that method, you should not girdle the tree, which is taking bark from all the way around the, the trunk. This kills the tree, slowly, but uh, surely. So if you're gonna take pieces from a living uh, creature, then you gotta do it carefully and respectfully. So let's see what we got. If you have a poplar tree, they are somewhat famously loose of bark this time of year. Um, if you don't have a poplar, uh, you can use a different kind, but if you know you have a poplar, then you'll have a really good time getting the bark off, typically. Whether it is standing or felled. Let's see. If you have a neighbor which had a tree come down recently, you could ask them. If you could perhaps take a piece, a little section. Oh, here comes Sam again. Hey, buddy. There he goes. Do you like my pine tree graveyard? Pro tip, don't use pine bark, you should use a deciduous tree. A tree which has leaves that fall off in the winter and come back in the spring. Kind of slim pickings so far. That kiwi there. Mm, here comes Eli. Good boys, mostly. All right. Well, in lieu of it, oh wait, I think I did see one. This is our bog. It's not a real bog, it's just really wet. Okay, so this is the tree I was thinking of. As you can see, it is very dried out and uh, not running of sap. So, uh, we go to plan B. All right, here's this. Here's the skinny with tools for this stuff. Sam, get over here. You need to hear this. This is important. Uh, to do this, I'm going to use one of these. It's a little oh, uh, box cutter blade. Real sharp. 
and I'm going to use the saw, the hacksaw. If you've used this tool more than 10 times in your life, then you should do this with adult supervision. You can do a thing. If you've done it 10 times, like you have enough command of that tool that you can safely do it. This tool you should have an adult use because their hands are stronger than yours. It literally just comes down to like, they are, they've been on the planet for longer and their hands have had more time to like develop the strength and dexterity to do with this what needs to be done with this project. You need a lot of hand strength. And if you don't have enough hand strength, uh, it doesn't matter how accurate you are, you're gonna have a hard time. And this is a sharp enough tool that like a very slight mistake can get real bloody real quick. So have an adult do this, um, unless you, I guess you could like arm wrestle the strongest person in your family. And if you beat them, then you can use this. How about that? That's our, that's our litmus test. So, um, strongest hands in the family using this. All right. So the scoop with this is, this is, I've, I borrowed this from my neighbor who was felling some uh, live trees somewhat recently. We're gonna girdle it, which means we're gonna cut all the way around um, in two places. And then we're gonna slice, so make a cut, um, well, here. Let's just lay into it, shall we? So I'm gonna start cutting. And I only need to cut, like, not very deep. We're just cutting through the bark. The reason trees do this every spring is that trees grow. You've seen the rings in a tree, you kind of to see how many years they are old. Every year when they do this, the it's they call it the sap run. So the sap runs underneath the bark and literally makes makes it so that the tree can add another layer of material, makes it so the bark can grow with the tree. Uh, and it's during this time that the skin of the tree basically becomes loose and you can do this thing that we're about to do. It only happens once a year and for a limited window that again, we may be too early for. And if that's the case, then we'll just, uh, we'll talk through it and go through the drawing a little bit later. But by the way, you should be making this cut uh, twice as tall as you want your final bark bucket to be. So I'm making a cut here and here. My bucket is gonna end up being only about yay tall. So I'm making just like a little container for uh, a plant. So back to sawing. Again, just going through that first layer of like skin of the bark. <laughs> There's a horse coming down the road. I love it here. I want to show you. See, look. Hi, horse. Hello. This place is amazing. I love it. It's great. Okay. Back to the task at hand. Take your scoring, your uh, box cutter, and just go straight down to, uh, from cut to cut. Now comes the real test. We need something to get underneath this corner and pry the bark away from the wood. And you can use a screwdriver, you can use a harder pointed stick. I am going to use the corner of my little box cutter to try and start this edge peeling up. Um, I've put gloves on for this portion just because it's like this activity that I'm doing is not what a box cutter is designed for. So, uh, Anytime I'm using a tool outside of its like designated, you know, purpose by the people who created it, I tend to err on the side of caution. And I'm really being very gentle. It's like, it's kind of the same carefulness if you are a person that has ever peeled the paper off of crayons. It's kind of the same carefulness you would use with that. You don't want to break it. All right, so I've got it started. I'm going to retract the blade on that, safety first, and just start sliding my angled stick underneath. Can you see how I'm dragging it across? Probably not. Get up close. Uh, 
just taking the stick, kind of going underneath, slowly pulling to separate it from the wood. Again, peeling paper off of a crayon. Be very slow and deliberate. If you try and go super fast, you're gonna have a weird time. All right. See? Oh! So actually, I'm gonna swing this around. So you can see it as I kind of peel it away from you and towards me. You'll have sort of a layer, you'll have the white here and then a sort of a layer of white here for this particular species. And you start just gently separating it from the wood. So far, no pointy things. So I'm doing this with my hands carefully. Um, if you have taken a piece of bark from the trunk of a tree uh, or from branches of certain other species, be very cautious going with your hands because lots of trees will have really sharp pointy, uh, like you can kind of see a little protrusion right here. On some trees, this is very, very sharp. Like it will break skin right away if you're just dragging your fingers across it like I'm doing. So go very slow anyway because you don't want to like mess it up. Ah, there's a sharp one. Eh. Uh, but also because you don't want to stab your fingers. I'm gonna flip it around, try and go away from myself like this. Again, really slow, really gentle, protecting both your precious bark and your precious fingies.